Can you learn to code on your mobile? We will try using the Grasshopper app today. You're watching Dev Tips, and I'm David. In the last video, I talked about learning to program using configuration or modifying an existing code base. In this video, we'll experiment with a different approach. We will be starting from scratch without knowing anything about code and then step by step build up our knowledge with an app. I've never taught programming per se, but I have been an educator in digital marketing and Google Analytics especially. And it's a difficult balance to find what is too little information for a student and what is like too much information, like information overload for a student. Each student is unique in how they learn. Some people will want to start with theory, like reading a pamphlet on uh, yoga, how to learn yoga. Others, they just want to start practicing, like do the backflip and... Uh, uh, and then after that, um, after that, go to the theory part. Starting with practice and a real project is what we talked about in the last video. And what is good with that is that you, by, by modifying very small, small tweaks, you will see results right away. Like changing the background color of an HTML document. The key essence of starting a real project and modifying it through configuration or modifying the code is that it's very quick to actually see a result. You will make modifications and then see the changes directly. If you start from theory, it's a longer way before you actually see results. And some people want to see the results straight away. Others are fine with just learning the foundation first and the fundamentals in the theory before they actually apply it to practice. The Grasshopper app is using a step-by-step -step example approach, sort of like configuration or modifying the code, but with very, very, very small examples. And this is very common in the code, learn how to code space. Then they mix it up with small quizzes to check on you to see if you've actually learned anything, if you've understood the concept. It is accessible to a lot of people because it's a mobile app and that's awesome. But the problem is that using the mobile to, to type is not at all as good as using the old keyboard. You have a small screen as well, so you're very limited in getting an overview of everything. But this is what we're gonna find out how it works. This is not sponsored by Grasshopper or anything. It is just an approach of teaching code on the mobile that I'm very excited about. All right, let's hop into the Grasshopper app. Let's check out the fundamentals. Yes, I have done them already. Mm -hmm -hmm. Let's start with the French flag. Welcome to your first puzzle. Each puzzle has a set of instructions at the top. Your goal is to create something that looks like this. I love this, how they are showing me the expected result. And then here is my code. This is what I need to configure. So what I can do now is edit the code. And this is what I find pretty neat. I have the code here, draw box blue, draw box white, draw box red, new line. Tap to get started. Tap below the last line to create a new line. Okay. Now this is the first exercise. So it's giving, it's giving, it's, <coughs> it's very helpful. Draw box, use blue. So you see here that I don't have to write the function name, I don't have to write the variable name, I just follow along here and tap my way to the correct answer. And then we run it. Yay, congratulations, let's go to next lesson. It gives me a small introduction. Now that you've drawn one flag, let's try another. Similar to the one before, you'll draw color boxes and create a line break. This time, however, the flag stripes are horizontal rather than vertical. Okay, instructions. Use the draw box function to assign the appropriate colors to each box and then use new line function to separate two rows of boxes. Da -da -da -da. And it's given me some starting points here. So let's add a new line here. I love this that you, I don't have to draw 
I have to, don't have to write anything. I just tap draw box. I have draw box yellow, draw box yellow, new line. I can add other things here. Uh, blue, draw box blue, draw box blue. And then I run it and I see the result. And it tells me some info. We use the draw box function to create the Gabonese flavor. You can create all sorts of shapes using draw box. Perfect. Then they also have quizzes. So now I've I learned how to draw a box with a color that I wrote. Quiz time. How many blue boxes will be drawn from this code? So now they force me to actually think a bit of what I just learned. How many blue boxes will be drawn from this code? Draw box orange, draw box blue, that's one. And then it's orange statement, then it's new line statement, draw box orange, and then it's a blue statement. So is that one or two boxes? Let's say I think it's two blue boxes. Check. Not quite. But they just they don't just fail me, they give me a small example of what to do here. To draw a blue box blue box, draw box blue is needed. So then there's only one draw box blue. Only one blue box will be drawn. Okay. And I just want to get this correct so let's just put the number one there. Yay! And then I get a small star that I used a function with some information about that. And that is how it's progressing. Uh, these are pretty basic. We've done some loopings. Band name generator. No, I don't want. Okay, so we generate some names with some for loops. So here you have some code. I'm just iterating through an array and then I'm iterating through a different array within each iteration. These are the fundamentals. These are the fundamentals. I have done them. So let's try the animations and see what it's like when I'm actually trying to solve something. Here's a puzzle ahead of your time. In this puzzle, you rotate the hour hand of a clock using transform attribute. The value of the transform attribute will be a string that describes how to rotate the shape. Rotate mm -hmm, degrees x and y. Okay, first number is how many degrees to rotate the shape clockwise. The next pair of numbers are the x and y coordinates of a point to rotate around. Okay, so how many degrees and then where is it located? Instructions. So they give me the background and now it's the to-do instructions. It's daylight saving time. That means you will need to set the clock forward by one hour. Edit the value of the transform attribute so that the hour hand is rotated 30 degrees further clockwise. So we want to move the hours. Mm -hmm. Clock face, minute hand, hour hand. So the hour hand has a transform. It's rotating 60 around the 100, 100 point. I want to edit this string to rotate 90 around the 100, 100 point. Let's try that. Uh, uh, that was not correct. Okay. Should it rotate on the other way? Oh, I don't know. 30. Done. Use the reset button to get a fresh start. What do you mean? How do I reset? The hour hand is already rotated in 60 degrees, you want to change it to 90 degrees. Didn't I just do that? Hour hand. Oh. 
Oh, okay. It wants me to put rotate 90 around 100, 100 points. Sorry guys and girls. Bam. Yes. Oh, oh. It's difficult when someone's watching. So I did that. Now it's quiz time to check on me to see if I did that correctly. What do I what do a what do a x and y represent in the code below? Transform or a is the degrees, x and y are the position of the center of the circle. Yes. Uh -huh. Pivoting point. Okay, I want to get this correct. Okay. The position to rotate around. That's what I'm that that is what I meant. All right. We have the robot repair. Let's not do that. Let's do the So here we have functions. You're doing great. The next topic is function. So we're now starting on a new function of a new topic called functions. I think this is a neat way to learn. But the problem with un tutorized uh, means of learning is that say I'm doing uh, this tetronimo thing. Reset. Okay, I just skim this. I don't even read it. I just see two bullet points here. Change at x120, change at y150. x120, num, 120, y, y, 150, run it. Yay, congratulations, I solved it. Okay, let's go to the next, look to the left. Yes, reset it. I just look at the bullets in the to-do, in the instructions. Change left eye at CY50 and then right pupil CX125. Okay, left eye CY50. Left eye CY50. And then right pupil CX125. Right pupil CX125. Yes, I solved it. But the problem is now, let's go to quiz time. How would you move the circle upward? Um, so it has something to do with C, Y, because that is the Y axis. But because I just ran through the exercises and didn't really think about them, I didn't, I didn't read the background, I didn't experiment uh, with the code, I just followed, I saw the pattern and then just wanted to complete the exercise. I didn't actually learn anything. Uh, so here... I don't know which way the coordinate system is running in in this D3 uh, that we're using. I have no idea. So this is a problem with unsupervised learning that I can run through the whole Grasshopper app and get sort of like a diploma. Yes, I passed it, but did I actually learn something? Maybe not. If there were a teacher there, the teacher... So this is what the quiz is doing. It's actually checking on me. Did I learn? So. See why I think that I think it probably begins top left like it often does on like a CRT TV and whatever. It often starts in the top left when you're programming. I just know that. But if I came from a math background, I thought I would probably think it starts from the bottom left. Like a, that kind of coordinate system. But I think it's from the top left, and then when we add numbers, 
it goes downwards, so we have to subtract numbers to get it to go upwards. So here we have CY 150, we want it to go up, so we need to subtract numbers, and this is the only option where we subtract numbers. Yes, so now I first I complete the two exercises not knowing what I did. But now, thanks to the quiz, the tutor, I actually learned something. Let's do another quiz. Where will this rectangle be positioned on the screen? So here we have, where does the coordinate system start? X is zero and Y is zero. We learned from the past quiz that it's the top left corner. Yay, boom. So this thing with the quiz time is pretty huge for this app. And I'm sure other um, online and app education uh, softwares are doing the same thing. And I totally endorse it because you need that. You can't just have exercises that people can run through and then not learn anything. Then just uh, they are just wasting their time to get a diploma and that's it. Okay. We did some exploration on Grasshopper's attempt to teach how to code on the mobile. So I can do it forever. I love it. To me, it seems like a pretty good way to get from zero knowledge up to like a grasp of JavaScript and how it works. But what if I want to take the next step after I've done after I've done the fundamentals and the animations and the animations too? And perhaps Grasshopper will release more classes. What is the next step? I don't know. You guys, please help me. Write in comments and suggest what other services there are that are good, that you have tried, that you can vouch for. And if there are bad ones, please write that as well, because that is very good for someone that wants to learn to, to know which ones aren't good, or at least what are the pros and cons with them. That was it for this week. Uh, you're watching Dev Tips with me, David, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.